Hi there, my name is Paul Moreira and today we're here to have a look at one very popular camera from the ex-Soviet Union called the Zorki 4. One of these days I was doing the math about my videos and then I realized that I have, I don't know how many Zorki 4s in my collection and I didn't have a video on, on it. And this is simply uh, inexcusable because this is a camera that I like a lot, otherwise I wouldn't have so many. Uh, in fact, I think I have almost the Zorki lineup uh, in my collection. And so today we shall have a look at the Zorki 4 in its simple, let's say, um, form and in its latest form, the Zorki 4K, because they are similar cameras and they should be uh, should be featured together in the same video. Now, so this is a, a camera, a rangefinder camera, meaning that it's not reflex. You get to frame your picture with a direct viewfinder and then you focus through a rangefinder, which is this window, little window here, that reflects a sort of a shadow um, image, a ghost image. And then when you coincide the real image with that ghost image, it means that the image is focused. It takes like, some use to, or using to, it depends on, um, on your background, but it's a, a good and funny experience. The Zorki lineup and these Soviet cameras are very well known because people tend immediately, those who don't know anything about cameras, to say that they are like a copies, which they are not. The Zorki 4 was a model produced in the middle of the 50s until right the end of the 70s. So it is hardly like a copy. It's true that the Soviets started out by copying the Leica II, but by this time, this camera has nothing to do with Leica except for uh, one element, which is the mount. It uses the same L39 mount, screw mount. And I say L to identify it as Leica, because if I say M, which is the DIN standard, uh, in order to speak about the diameter of screws, um, of screw mounts or, or even screws, I could lead you into a false statement as there are lenses that are, are M39 and will not work with this camera. L39 means that it has a it has 39 millimeters of diameter and it is fully rangefinder coupled and it was designed with the flange distance or the plane, the plane distance uh, focal plane distance between film and the lens uh, according to the Leica standard in this case of the Russians more or less but it's not a, it's no big deal at least to me so if you don't know how it works, this is the mount, this is the rangefinder coupling, that it's better to be left alone, and there's nothing here to, s to see really. This is the uh, shutter curtain that we shall have a look later on. So the only thing in common that these cameras have with Leica is they share the same mount. L39 mount and they were not alone there were several models and makes that use the very same mount not only from Russia but from Japan for instance Canon the uh, Canon P the Canon 7 for instance 7s they are not like a copies but they do share the same mount so once I think we have established that these are not like copies, 
it's hard to imagine a like it being made uh, in the same way that these cameras were made they lack the refinement of the Leica but they do respect the concept of the Leica and that's about it but there were several others on the market that follow exactly the same concept so enough of this I chose this one this particular one because it's the um, it's a limited edition commemorating the 50 years of the Soviet power and uh, by limited edition don't expect something very likeish by limited emission, uh, edition I mean one million about it so they were made in 1967 because Soviet cameras do have the name the year of build in their serial number so this is 67 and during 1967 all had this stamped or screened on the top so it is a limited edition to one million units take it uh, well i'd say more or less but it's a plain zorki 4 and that really has no differences whatsoever between a regular non-marked Zorki. Okay, so this is a very simple camera because simply there is no light meter. You are left on your own for exposure. For me it's not a very bad thing. I'm um, not a very old guy but I'm an old guard guy so I started out with film. It, it, it is no problem for me to use it without a meter. If you feel the need, you can always have a handheld meter or use uh, another camera to meter before you take the picture. The commands of the camera are fairly normal for a rangefinder. You get a focal plane rangefinder. Um, you can see that the speed dial is located here on the top and you get all the standardized speeds from one second to one thousandth of a second so this camera has slow shutter speeds something that many soviet cameras did not have that's why they they have this sort of look raised look in order to accommodate the extra mechanism and it's not very nice um, let's see the shutter is in B and now we shall try to fire it with another speed which was 1 205th of a second. It's not the most silent camera in the world but again it is a focal plane shutter and for those of you who don't know what a focal plane shutter is, you shall see in a minute. No advanced lever, this is a knob to advance the film. This is a mechanical frame counter, so you have to reset it before you start taking pictures in order not to lose track of how many images you've got left in your film. This color here around the shutter button is very normal and it means that uh, as two positions one is to rewind and to free the film tip and this is very it happens frequently with rangefinder cameras from Nikon from camera uh, from Canon from Leica of this day so it's it, it's fairly standard here you have uh, an, uh, something that is very useful which is a dioptric adjustment for the viewfinder for people who wear spectacles or who are slightly uh, short-sighted, it's very useful. Also, there is no rewind crank here, so it's a bit of a pain. But if you like the Leica um, M and the MP in particular, the mechanical perfection also has one of these. So, uh, it might be a good thing after all. Personally I don't like it, I think that uh, I think that the crank would be much better. Here is the viewfinder and the viewfinder is one of the nicest things about this camera. It's big, it's bright, very 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 bright 
it's brighter than the viewfinder of a Canon, uh, whichever you choose, even a 7 or 7S or Canon P. But unfortunately, it does not have any frames marked. It's only for 50 millimeter, but, but even so, it's, it's very imprecise to take pictures at um, closer distance because you're never too sure where the range find the uh, viewfinder actually ends, which are the limits. So it's a shame because it is very, very bright, very easy to focus, and it's a, it is a joy to, to use. Now, let's see what's inside of our Zorki 4. And you see, this is the focal plane shutter. It means that the shutter is near, next to the film. So it's called focal plane shutter. It travels horizontally and it's made of cloth. So one piece of advice, if you are using one of these or almost 99% of rangefinders, do be careful and always use the lens cap because otherwise the lens will act as um, a giant magnifying glass you know and will burn holes into this uh, shutter on these shutter curtains as i was saying the camera is fairly simple it's it's built in a strong way but one can see that uh, it's not in the standard of the Japanese counterparts or Leicas. But anyhow, it's different. It is much, much cheaper. And so these, this sort of thing is to be expected. Anyway, I don't see really anything wrong with it. It has some exposed sprockets and gears. Um, the, these sprockets are for the film um, to engage and for transport, so they are not for the advanced system in itself. They do not contact with any metallic parts. But the camera, as it is, it is made of cast aluminium or Zamac or something like that. It's very heavy, all finished in chrome and uh, aluminium so it is very heavy and feels expensive in our days in the days of plastic digital wonders these cameras that were very cheap and uh, many people used to scorn at and some still do they feel like they are worth a million dollars because they look like a million dollar camera they are really really nice i think even the design i think got nicer with the years because they might not be classical in terms of design but they are very very nice i mean especially now when you look at all those black or black silver painted plastic cameras it's different it's nicer now i spoke earlier about the Zorki 4K, which is this one. So let me make room for both of them. And the only thing that is different between the cameras, one are the engravings itself. This one is in Cyrillic. This one is in Roman Latin alph alphabet. Also, the speeds, shutter speeds, are not engraved. Here they are engraved, so it was a step backward. But the K is very well known because it features an advanced lever. So it is much quicker to operate. And so, in terms of handling, it might be a better choice. Still, 
this lever or lever, sorry, is pretty ugly. Uh, it feels like an add-on, which it is, and so it's not. I wouldn't say as beautiful because uh, I don't know if you can say that a Zorki Four is beautiful, but anyway, it um, unbalances the design a bit. But it does have more, uh, in terms of ergonomics, it's, it is much better. Sadly, the Russians did not profit the occasion to fit a crank here. So they retain, they retain the old knob system to rewind the film. These cameras are separated by 10 years and there are no noticeably dif differences. So they are basically the same. So, if you ever wonder what the difference between the Zorki 4K and the regular Zorki were, is that the Zorki 4K was the last model, the Zorki 4 was the replacement of the Zorki 3, or better still perhaps the Zorki 2S, I'm not uh, sure about that. But the main advantage is that it features an advanced lever, a bit flimsy, and, but it works, does the job. Now, you might be confused about the lenses. So this one features an Industar 50, that's a 50mm, 3.5, ugly as sin, as you can see, ugly as sin. But it is a very nice performer. This one, only by pure chance, features the Industar 8, uh, sorry, the Jupiter 8, which is a very well-known lens. It exists in silver or aluminium construction and black, later ones are black anodized aluminium. The, this lens, the Jupiter 8, is famous because it derives from a pre-war Zeiss design, the sonar, and so people think that they are getting uh, Zeiss lenses for peanuts, which they aren't, because uh, even if they were, they are lenses that are nearly 80 years old. So they are amazingly good for the price, and especially <laughs> their age, even though this one was made in 73, 1973, but the design goes back to the 30s for the Contax cameras. So you see, you can have the Zorki with several lenses because the lenses are interchangeable. Now, you might ask, they are interchangeable with what? And so I brought on purpose lenses that are not from uh, Russia and modern. And I have here the Voigtlander that was made uh, recently, until recently, which is the color Scopar. 35mm 2.5. And now, if we want to use a wide angle lens, although this is not a wide, wide angle lens, but uh, if I remove the cap, I will be luckier. So, you see, a modern lens made for Cosina cameras, and because they share the same mount, works perfectly with this Zorki, or any other Zorki. Now, you might ask, yes, that's very nice, Paul, but uh, you said the viewfinder has no frames. It, it's only built for 50mm lenses. How do I frame and take pictures with this camera if I'm using a lens that is different from the viewfinder? Normally, in other brands, you would have frames, several frames, in order to, to be more, uh, to be cheaper, on the viewfinder and you would get roughly an idea of the, um, the framing of the picture that you were taking. 
or if it was a Leica or something like that, those frames would come and go automatically as you put the, the lens in. Now, here there is another solution, which is a separate viewfinder. And this is what we use when we want to use lenses other than 50mm. This is a, a Russian-made multi-viewfinder, so it comprises mainly and mostly all the focal length lens uh, that uh, the focal length of the lens that are used in rangefinder cameras. So we start to look and we choose this one, for instance, that says 3.5 centimeters, which means millimeters. Okay, and we're all set. But remember, first you have to focus here and then you have to frame here because this viewfinder is not connected to the rangefinder. Ah, it has a, a nice, rather nice, uh, it's like a contraption, but it works. This external viewfinder from Russia is really of high quality. It's very, very nice. It really has a superb image. And I even have here other lenses. So this one was from Voigtlander. So let me pick a telelens, which I don't like. I think rangefinders were made for 50mm and wide-angle lenses. Did I remove the cap? Yes, I did. So, this is an American lens. It's a Volensack Velostigmat 94.5 uh, of aperture. And so if I wanted to use it, I would have to, to come here and look for this focal length or the closest focal length of 90. So what we've got here is 85. So it's not it's not a big deal. Between 85 millimeters and 90 millimeters the difference is negligible. So I can use this lens on the Zorki with no problem. This lens was originally supplied by Leica. And it's written here, Lights New York. And people love to talk about Leica. So I have here Leica lens, that original Leica lens that will screw and work without any problem. So this is an Elmar, also 35mm, 3.5. This is a pre-war lens, so uncoated. So you see, if you buy a Zorki 4, for that matter, any Zorki, you have access to a huge range of lenses, ranging from classic uh, lenses, like uh, these last two that we, or me, have put in the camera, to Russian glass. This is again the Jupiter 8, but in aluminium. Sounds nice. Sounds no. Seems nice. Or nicer. So these are really very nice cameras if you want to get into rangefinder photography and you don't have the means to buy a very expensive camera like uh, Leica, Canon, Nikon and others that uh, were made using this mount. People will tell you that these cameras are a hit and miss in terms of reliability. I can agree with that up to a point, but because they made so many of them Let's say that 10% uh, of them had problems, even design problems. If you multiply by the millions that they were made, of course, they are plentiful of, of cameras that do have problems. But 
there will be a few other million that do not have any sort of problems. But I do agree that quality floats a bit. I have uh, cameras that feel very well put together, uh, are relatively quiet, others that feel a bit loose, that are not tightly put together as, 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 as its older or younger sister. Sometimes people say the older the better. I have cameras that say um, that that agree with that, and I've got cameras that say that's nonsense. I've got uh, fat cameras that the later ones are much better than earlier ones in terms of of noise, in terms of uh, play, in the controls. So it's different, difficult to say what you you should look for. At least I'm not. I do not have uh, an experience, but still from my experience, I cannot t tell you which one is best to go for an older one or a younger one. When dealing with uh, classic cameras, I would say that going for the youngest one might be a safer choice because these cameras are old. So this one is older than I am, not by much, but it is. So. When these cameras are almost 50 years old, problems are to be expected. This one is 10 years old, uh, younger, sorry. So perhaps let's hope that internally it has a better, it is in better condition than this one. Good. So this is what I wanted today to talk you, uh, to talk about the Zorki 4 that was sort of um, show off a bit for Russian equipment. In the Zorki lineup, I really like the Zorki 4, the Zorki 5, the Zorki 6 as well, which is perhaps by far the best of them. And there is one very special Zorki that I have made a video and will have to remake it, which is the Zorki 3. But that is for a different reason. In terms of Usability, the, these cameras for me and price are really, really nice. If after using one of these, you really feel that you were made for rangefinder photography, then you can start saving up for a Leica or a Canon or a Cousin of Whiteland or whatever uh, fancies you. But perhaps for the money they go, for what they cost, it is a very sound and wise idea. First to buy one of these. And I would recommend this over a FED because of the viewfinder. The viewfinder of this, these cameras is simply amazing, very bright, very big. So you can easily work and take pictures without stressing your eyes. Although they are noisier than the FEDs, it's true. But as I was saying, perhaps you should consider these cameras before taking the plunge into expensive equipment. Well, I do hope that you have enjoyed this video about the Zorki 4. I really did enjoy making it. And I hope that I will see you in, in a very near future. Thank you, and so see you very soon.